You know, Mike, I really like those film. You know, when you just watch, you just kind of know where they're going to fit in the next level. It's kind of like just a pair of Levi jeans. You just know they're going to fit. And our boy Levi today is one of those guys. So how are you doing today, Mike? I'm doing good. You know, I didn't quite expect that intro. I'll be honest. We have Levi. And I, I have my own pronunciation written out. So it's Own Zurique. That's how we say his last name. Don't know if we're going to say it again throughout the rest of this video. But I say we just hop right in because there are a lot of moving parts here with the Levi. Obviously, as you can see, in terms of the statistical production consistency, right? Obviously, pretty much from his freshman all the way to his junior year in terms of what he was doing, uh, you know, in terms of getting sacks, tackles, that kind of stuff. But then obviously the opt-out. Like we talked about guys who opted out multiple times now. What's the sort of concern with that that you have for a guy like Levi? No, there's definitely concerns. And I think, you know, defensive line, offensive line, any of your big guys, the first thing you think about is conditioning. Like how have they been staying in shape? And I think you can go both ways. Stay too much in shape, maybe lose some of that weight. Uh, maybe don't play with the same amount of strength. Or, you know, maybe all they do is focus on strength and then have absolutely no cardio to back it up. So I think that's always a concern, especially with D, like D linemen. So I think that's the first concern there. Also um, just, you know, in game shape is a whole different ball game, especially when you're in the trenches. So definitely concerns there, but um, I really liked what I, what I saw it from him in 2019. So um, in certain aspects, and we'll get into it more, but I definitely concerns with the sitting out here. No, and, you know, we've kind of talked about it previously, but unlike a guy who's injured where you're just hoping that he can, you know, build back up to where he was, technically a guy who opted out could could progress during that year off. You know, we don't really know which direction he trended, whether it was up or down. And, you know, you talked about staying in game shape and, you know, just staying physically fit and whatnot. Well, you know, as pro day the other day, Levi ran a 4.8540, a 30-inch vert, and did 29 reps at 225. So most certainly an interesting day out of old Levi and, you know, kind of hopping into my grades. I'll be honest, I did not see those 29 reps on field in terms of his ability to anchor and just play at the point of attack, but he wasn't necessarily bad either. Like he wasn't getting bullied. He was playing all around the defensive line. Uh, so, you know, it was kind of hard to gauge, oh, this is him versus tackle versus guard versus, you know, but I, I thought that he was all right, no matter where he played, if that makes sense. But I thought really where he shined was in terms of his ability to rush the passer. And a lot of that came down to his quick first step. He has the highest uh, explosiveness and first step grade that I've given anybody to this point. And I think that he most certainly backed it up with that 40 yard dash time that he showed. And uh, other than that, I thought his block shedding was a little bit questionable against the run. I thought that, you know, once you really got into him, if he didn't get that good positioning, you could kind of eat him up a little bit. Um, but at, with a guy who's 290 pounds, 6'2", I think that's kind of understandable considering his play style. Otherwise, I thought he had a good motor, uh, really good athleticism. And other than that, I would just say a little bit shaky in terms of block recognition and awareness. But but no, I really like to leave overall coming in at a 73.75. So I'm like, where are you at? Yeah, kind of back to my my intro with the Levi fit. He's a three tech, and you, you saw it on film. And he, they actually, I guess, maybe that's a bad just pass rushing in general. The first play, I was watching the Cal film with with Mike, and I, the first play is actually lined up at the nose and just explosive. Uh, he by far was the first one uh, um, off the line of scrimmage, and it wasn't really close. I'm like, is is that really him? Um, so I think that really shows that I think a three tech is probably the perfect fit for him in, in the NFL lined up between the guard tackle, the B gap. Um, I think that's really where he's going to make his money the next level. Yeah. Not to cut you off, but real quick, I did actually find an also PFF infographic where, you know, they, they said what positions he played in that 2019 season. So obviously we don't always trust PFF for their analysis skills, but hopefully they can at least identify what gap somebody played. And so in terms of as zero or one tech, he played 184 snaps in 2019 as a three tech, he played 274 as a four or five tech, he played 29 and as a seven tech, he played 10 snaps. So this man literally played anywhere. As Mike said, we turned on the film, he started at nose, shifted out. And then, you know, the more film you watch, you see him wind up as almost a wide nine at times. And it's like, you know, what the heck is going on? But I do think that Mike's exactly right. He projects 100% as a three tech at the next level. Yeah, I think it's the most natural fit. And I'm not using this man as a comparison by no means, but like you can get away with that. Like watch, like kind of like how the Rams use Aaron Donald. Like I think he has that, you know, that I, and don't, 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 say this is a comparison because by no means am I comparing this man to Aaron Donald, but um, you could move him around with his pass rushing ability. He definitely can bull rush. He had a really strong bull rush, put that against, you know, a right tackle. And I think that might work. So I think he can have some position versatility in the next level. Um, 
again, I probably if maybe one of our two comments we get, maybe one of us be like, what do you do comparing Levi to Aaron Donald? That's ridiculous. But that's not at all. I'm just saying the kind of the way they use him. You could definitely get away with that with Levi in the next level, moving him around a little bit. But I do think lined up between the guard and tackle. Um, I think he has really nice use of hands in the pass, um, in the run, a little bit questionable with the block shedding, which I agree with your, your low grade there, but um, just put him between two offensive linemen and watch him run. And, and he did a great job. I don't think I, by, by far, he's my favorite pass rushing D tackle we've seen so far and consistent. I think consistently he showed the same thing. I don't necessarily disagree at all. And, you know, as we kind of get into the overall big board, I do currently have Levi as my defensive tackle number three, but Mike, I know you weren't quite as high on Christian Barmore as I might've been. So who do you have as your, as your defensive tackle two there, Levi or Barmore? I, I think it's depending on what you're looking for. Cause I think Levi definitely showed well, he was vulnerable in the run. And I think Barmore did as well, but he made plays in the run. It was just, you know, and he was definitely not, uh, he wasn't very consistent. Barmore wasn't on film. Some plays he was basically blown out of the play other plays. Um, in the run, he was downfield making a play on the running back, or in the pass, he was, you know, right at the quarterback's feet. So um, if you're looking purely for and, – and I think three-tech has just been one of my favorite positions just through the draft in general. So I feel like I have a little bit of bias there. But if you're you're looking for a more well-rounded D-tackle, Barmore is probably the way to go. But um, I think the new age of D-tackle, like, like what D-tackles are getting paid? It's Aaron Donald, Chris Jones, like – Get Brady, Brady Jr. Yeah. So uh, and and all of them, I don't. Aaron Aaron Donald again, an outlier. But the other two, like Chris Jones, is a vulnerable in the run, and the man just got paid what eighteen million dollars a year. I mean, he's really susceptible to getting downfield too quick and not seeing the play behind, run, you know, go behind him. So I think that's why, like, I take I think my grade for Levi would be higher than than Barmore. No, that's definitely interesting. I know a lot of people will just sort of defer to the statistics and say, oh, Barmore had eight and a half sacks. Levi had, you know, not even half that. And, you know, I think that's only looking at one side of things. Obviously, Mike and I were more in for the disruption. I do agree that Levi was more consistently uh, disruptive in terms of pressuring the QB and really just, just making things tight there in the pocket, whether it was as a one tech, three tech, five tech, seven tech, no matter where he was, it did seem like he was getting constant disruption. I would slightly go Barmore because I do think, uh, like Mike said, he was better against the run at times. I would, I would still value that a little bit more. Um, and I, I would tend to put Barmore ahead of Levi due to that. But overall, I, I think that they are pretty tight there in terms of that DT2 and DT3 to this point. The only question then is going forward, will any of the subsequent guys uh, sort of change that ranking? So with that being said, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you click the like button. And if you do want to see our subsequent defensive tackle rankings, make sure you click that subscribe button to uh, have them pop up in your notification box. But no, with that being said, I think I think we're mic'd up and I think we're micing out. Peace, guys. Deuces.